What if Anakin's spirit shattered after his duel on Mustafar? So basically, his Force Ghost as Anakin dies and becomes one with the Living Force, while Vader, the living body, stays alive. That's our story for today. Hope it makes some sense as we get going here. I hope you enjoy this video, and let's get right into it. Our story begins on Mustafar, as Obi-Wan has jumped off of his floating platform to land among the hot coals, looking down now on Anakin. After a long, heart-wrenching fight, Obi-Wan has a true advantage, and he yells down at Anakin, telling him that he has the high ground. But Obi-Wan can tell that this is not over. Anakin has spent his life trying to prove himself. He's not going to stop now, and it will be his undoing. Anakin yells at Obi-Wan not to underestimate his power, then flips into the air. Obi-Wan waits, and knows what he must do. He slices through flesh, two legs, one arm, and Vader, formerly Anakin, crashes to the ground, sliding towards the lava. Obi-Wan wonders if he will slide all the way in. He isn't sure if he wants that. He knows he cannot kill Anakin. It would be merciful, and Obi-Wan is not feeling merciful, nor will he kill an unarmed man. Instead, he will let the Force decide, and now the two of them yell back and forth at each other. Emotions are beyond anything that they've ever experienced, and Obi-Wan eventually turns to leave, grabbing Anakin's lightsaber. And as Vader watched him go, he could feel his life fading. He didn't want to die, and he remembered how others in the dark side have kept themselves alive through impossible circumstances. One must completely give in to the dark side, let it consume them, kill whatever remnant of light is within. So Vader reached deep within himself, fully embracing the dark, forgetting Padme, Obi-Wan, Ahsoka, Rex, his mother. He was not Anakin, he was only Vader. And in this moment, something truly unexpected happened. As Vader killed Anakin, the two became two shattered beings. The spirits of Anakin Skywalker, the version of him that was all good, the version that loved Padme, his mother, Obi-Wan, Ahsoka, and everyone else emerged. Anakin Skywalker was alive, and he was now a blue, transparent ghost, looking down on Vader as he clawed his way up the hot coals. As Anakin looked to Vader, he couldn't believe how far he'd fallen. He was manipulated for years, too blinded by his need for power, his need to control everything, till he was too blind to see that it was Palpatine that had been controlling him the entire time. Anakin felt truly sorry for Vader, sorry for everything he did, thousands of Jedi and clones dead because of his actions. Anakin now wanted nothing more than to fix this. And the ghost of Anakin could hear whispers of his past, guiding him on his new mission. He could hear Qui-Gon say that he was the Chosen One, and he will bring balance to the Force. These whispers would tell Anakin that he is to become one with Vader once more, and become the Balanced Chosen One. But in order to do that, the Vader that killed off the Light Side must realize that he is wrong. Vader must accept that the Dark Side is not the real path, and only then can Anakin and Vader become one once more and bring balance. So Anakin has his mission. His spirit would then be pulled into the netherworld of the Force, where once again, he could hear voices of the past, present, and future. But the future was murky, impossible to see because of the shattered spirit of Vader and Anakin. Anakin once more could hear the voices of Qui-Gon, the former Jedi Master told Anakin that he still does believe in him, and he will help him bring Vader back. Anakin and Vader must become one and restore the balance as the Chosen One. And as Qui-Gon was teaching Anakin to show himself to others, the galaxy was changing. Darth Sidious would find the body of Vader and bring him to the medical facility on Coruscant to become more machine than man, and Padme Amidala was being prepped for birth on Polis Massa. Palpatine was sure that Padme was going to die. He could feel it in the Force, and he focused all of his attention on Vader, preparing to bring him the news and only drive him further into the dark side. And on Polis Massa, the medical droids were speaking to Yoda, Obi-Wan, and Bale, saying that Padme was dying from largely unexplained circumstances. They could only guess that the injuries, plus her loss of the will to live, were killing her. And Yoda looked in sadly at Padme, but seconds later, he could feel a familiar presence. Anakin Skywalker, and an extremely faint outline of Anakin, would form next to Padme. No one else could see it, and Yoda almost wanted to interfere, but the voice of Qui-Gon assured Yoda that it was alright. Anakin reached out a hand to Padme's head, and it was as if she too could feel this. Anakin began to be with her, to give her some life from the Force, and within minutes, the medical droids began to say that something was changing within Padme. 
her life signs were returning to normal. Yoda was very curious, and when things were settled, he went off to meditate as it seemed like Anakin had saved Padme's life. Yoda closed his eyes, feeling into the Force, trying to find Anakin, and as Yoda dove deeper, Anakin came to him, saying that he was truly sorry, but the Force is now allowing him to guide the Jedi down a new path. Yoda spoke to Anakin, saying that he cannot be trusted, he betrayed and murdered an innocent Jedi, he is a true Sith. Anakin wanted to tell Yoda that it was all Vader, but they were one in the same. Instead, Anakin said that no amount of apologizing would ever make up for what he did. His darkness was a monster, but now he needs to help guide the Jedi in defeating these Sith. But again, Yoda said no, saying that Anakin has done enough and that now he is dead, the Jedi Order must move on. But Anakin told Yoda that he is not dead, instead he is shattered. While the spirit of Anakin has passed on, the body of Vader, of pure evil, is alive. And this revelation would change everything. Vader would be looking for them, the children and Padme would not be safe alone. They would have to stay with the Jedi. Yoda thanked Anakin for telling him this, then broke off the communication. Vader was alive. Over the next couple weeks, Bail Organa and his aides would search for a safe planet for the Jedi, Padme, and the children to go, instead of being stuck in the Polis Masa facilities, and soon they found it. One of Bail's personal aides has family ties on a small planet called Chandar, and it is a hidden backwater planet that the Empire will never have any business on. So the group would travel to Shandar, and they would be introduced to a small community made up mostly of refugees from the Clone Wars, driven out of their homes by Separatist occupation, forced to go elsewhere. It was currently a village of around 200 people, and they would welcome Obi-Wan, Yoda, Padme, and the children with open arms. The group would settle in, cut off from the galaxy, and begin their new lives, knowing that someday the Empire would have to fight taken back to them. Over the first month, Yoda would spend most of his time meditating, communicating with Anakin, coming to terms with the fact that in order to defeat Vader and the Sith, then he will need Anakin's help. After this month, Yoda would speak to Obi-Wan and Padme, and inform them of Anakin's presence in the Force, then teach Obi-Wan how to find him. Anakin's spirit was getting stronger, and he was able to fully manifest itself now. So as Obi-Wan meditated, he too would learn to find Anakin. Initially, he was very afraid, as the last he saw of Anakin, the two of them were trying to kill each other. But over a couple days of communication, Anakin would assure Obi-Wan that it is truly Anakin, not the Dark Lord that Anakin became. The Force Ghost was the light side, while the living body was of the dark side. And this would help Obi-Wan a lot, as Anakin helped realize to Obi-Wan that it was not his fault. Anakin's turn was his own fault, no one else's, maybe Palpatine. Could more have been done to help Anakin? Of course, but it was still his decisions to do what he did. Soon enough, Anakin was even able to manifest himself to those who didn't have the Force, as long as they had a true connection with Anakin. This would mean that Padme could soon see and talk to him, and for months on end, Anakin and Padme would be with each other. Anakin would be able to see his children and talk to his wife, who would often say that she always knew there was good in Anakin. And after around a year on this planet, Anakin would begin explaining how the Jedi can defeat the Sith once more. He would tell the Jedi that although Vader swore off the light side completely, he still does have one true weakness. He thinks that Padme and the children are dead, and this is what allows him to stay engulfed in the dark. But if Vader saw his wife and children, then a spark would ignite in him, and the spirit of Anakin could once more become one with Vader, allowing him to kill the Emperor. Anakin just needs Vader to have that spark ignited. He needs to see that there is still hope in the light, and Vader once more must accept Anakin back into his life. So, for years, Obi-Wan, Yoda, and Padme would begin to understand this while also trying to raise the twin children. On Shandar, they were quickly accepted, and their natural leadership allowed each of them to take a leadership position among the village. There was no government or anything, but they more so would serve as helpful guides for the people. And these people all held resentment for the Empire, as the Jedi would explain to these people that the Separatists drove them away, were secretly controlled by the Emperor. All of these people lost family, friends, and homes to the war, and from the Emperor, so they were not at all opposed to someday fighting back, if that day ever comes. Obi-Wan would train many of the people here to fight, and it seemed like every week, more refugees would come here looking for safety because of the Empire. The people were given purpose, and the Jedi along with Padme were given hope as Anakin continued to assure them that there was a way out of the rule of the Sith. 
Anakin would often try to connect with Vader, but it was not easy at all. Vader had given in to the darkness. He accepted that Padme and his children were gone, and so Anakin had to be gone. The spirit of Anakin could sometimes see Vader when he was in pain, angry, or sad, but there was never enough light for Anakin to actually speak to Vader. The spark was in there, it was just waiting to be lit. And one day, on Shandar, everything began to change for the worst. Luke and Leia were playing by the river with a few other children of Shandar, and Obi-Wan was watching them from the distance while Padme was asleep. Luke and Leia were around five years old now, and they were tossing some toys around. One of the toys went into the river, and Luke tripped as the current swept him off his feet. He began tumbling through the river towards a waterfall, and Obi-Wan took off running to get to him. As Luke went over the edge, Obi-Wan was still running, but the young Leia reached out, catching Luke with the Force. She'd never truly used the Force other than floating some small blocks, but now, as she watched her brother fall, something awoke inside of her. She held Luke in the air until Obi-Wan could come and do the rest, helping Luke back to the ground, promising him that everything was alright. But Leia's awakening in the Force sent a ripple, and this ripple would be felt by the Sith. Darth Sidious would call Darth Vader to his office and tell the apprentice that he has felt an awakening. Someone strong in the Force has accidentally revealed themselves, and so Sidious assigned Vader to find this person and destroy them. Trace this ripple through the Force, do what must be done. And Vader said that it would be done very soon. And so he would leave the office, considering his options. He decided to trace the ripple to whatever corner of the galaxy it was in, then disperse spies and probe droids to all nearby systems until this ripple has been found and dealt with. In the coming weeks on Shandar, a new group of refugees would arrive. There were around 400 people in the village now, but among this group was one of Vader's Imperial spies in disguise. And after a couple days of searching the planet, this spy would see Obi-Wan helping Luke and Leia float small rocks with the Force, and this would be reported back to Vader. Vader would read the report, and the Jedi was described to look like Obi-Wan. Vader wondered if it could truly be him, and so he readied his 501st troopers to head to Shandar immediately. On Shandar, it was a rather peaceful evening. Luke and Leia were playing together in the grass, as Yoda, Obi-Wan, Padme, and the Ghost of Anakin watched peacefully. They all knew the day was approaching, when they would have to fight the Empire, but the children were still too young to risk any sort of exposure. Anakin was happy, but as he watched his children, he could suddenly feel Vader. With urgency, he told the Jedi that Vader was coming with the Empire. He didn't know how, but Vader knew they were here. And without a second of hesitation, the Jedi activated the signal in the village, telling everyone to get into the nearby forest and hide. They had practiced protocol for if the Empire ever comes to Shandar, and that protocol was activated today. All around the village, the people were alerted as to what to do. There were hideouts, traps, guns, and explosives strategically placed all around the forest, and everyone began running towards the forest. As soon as everyone had evacuated the village, Vader and the Empire emerged from hyperspace. Five troop carriers descended down to the surface, and from deep in the forest, Vader and his legion of stormtroopers could be seen. Vader pointed forward to the village, and five troopers moved in with flamethrowers, and began burning down the village without any hesitation. Every single home, made largely of stones, logs, and other material was burned up and destroyed, as stormtroopers went from home to home, trying to find any stragglers. Obi-Wan wanted to go in and stop this madness, but Anakin spoke to him, saying they must separate Vader from the troopers, show him that Padme and the children are alive, and he can become Anakin once more. And so, Obi-Wan stayed put. Before long, the Empire started to walk into the forest, and now it was time for the people to fight back. Booby traps began to go off on stormtroopers, as explosions would send them flying. Log traps would topple them over, and the people of this village would hide in the trees, shooting down the unexpecting troopers. A battle would begin, and soon Vader would follow the stormtroopers into the forest. As Vader looked around, a blue lightsaber swung at his face. He barely blocked it, then ran towards where it came from. It was thrown from deep in the woods. Vader cut down trees in his path, separating himself from the stormtroopers, and eventually coming upon a clearing where Yoda and Kenobi were waiting for him. This was the first time Yoda and Kenobi were seeing Vader up close in his menacing, robotic suit, the breathing echoing around the trees and he held up his red saber, saying that today, the Jedi die. Kenobi and Yoda ignited their sabers, moving in on Vader. If they could weaken him, and then show him that Padme and the children were alive, perhaps he would become Anakin once again. 
So Yoda, Obi-Wan, and Vader battled as red, green, and blue sabers lit up the forest. As the sounds of battle could be heard in the distance, the Jedi didn't want to kill Vader. He was their best shot at killing the Emperor. They needed him to turn back to the light. The stormtroopers in the distance were completely ambushed, calling for reinforcements as the villagers were taking them down. And as Vader swung at Yoda and Kenobi, he was soon having trouble keeping up. His main advantage was that he spent the last five years fighting, while Yoda and Kenobi spent the last five years away from the fight. But together, they were a true match for Vader. Yoda would use the force to smash a tree, then throw large branches at Vader as Obi-Wan tried to swing for his blind spots. The Dark Lord was strong. He fought well. But soon Yoda was able to get to a large rock, flip off fit to slash Vader across the chest as Obi-Wan cut through his knee. Vader fell to the ground, and the two Jedi would use the force to open a hidden bush, revealing Padme, Luke, and Leia. And Vader's reality was shattered. On Mustafar, he gave all of this up, and then Sidious told him that his family was dead. But as he looked at Padme, Luke, and Leia, perhaps he was wrong. Perhaps Anakin was not dead, and Vader could then see someone else. The spirit of Anakin. Anakin was still alive. Vader was about to let Anakin in, to embrace it once more, to embrace the light, to give up the dark, when suddenly, Thai bombers flew from above, dropping bombs on the forest. Vader looked up as one of the bombs landed between him and his family. He reached out with the force to stop the explosion, but it only worked a bit. He was blown backwards, eventually slamming into a group of rocks, and Vader went unconscious. In the forest, the bombs were dropped all over, killing the villagers, and Obi-Wan, Yoda, Padme, and the children barely made it into a cave where they were safe. The bombings would continue for 20 minutes, and during this time, Vader's body was loaded back onto his ship, and no one was sure whether he was alive. He was quickly shipped back to Coruscant by the Empire. In the cave, around 100 refugees would make it inside, but this meant that a huge majority of them died in the bombings. It was a terrible day, but the spirit of Anakin returned to them. He said that all hope may not be lost. A spark of Anakin was ignited, and if Vader chose to embrace this spark, the end of the Empire can begin very soon. And within a few hours, Vader was awakened on his ship, and he was descending down to the Imperial Palace. He was to meet with Palpatine and update him on the mission. But Vader, for the first time since Mustafar, was very conflicted. He saw Padme, his children, and Anakin. Anakin could still return. Vader just had to let him in. And the voice of Anakin told him to let the light in. Vader tried to brush it off, but he just couldn't do it. And soon enough, Vader would find himself kneeling in front of Sidious. His chest and leg were repaired on the ship, and now he could feel his own saber on his hip. Vader wanted to take it, drive it through Sidious' head, and kill him for lying about Padme. But Sidious began to laugh, saying that he can feel Vader's anger. And Vader decided now to make the move. But as he did, Sidious blasted him with lightning, and Vader slammed into the far wall. Sidious was laughing again, saying that Vader is too weak to ever truly challenge him. But now Vader could once again see the ghost of Anakin. He told Vader to let him in, and as Anakin Skywalker said they can both become strong enough to defeat the Sith, they can bring balance as one, Vader and Anakin combined. And so as Sidious curled his fingers, shooting lightning, Vader embraced the light, and the spirit of Anakin once more joined with the body, and right before the lightning hit Anakin, he was able to reach out his gloved hand and catch the lightning. The power of the Chosen One was here. The lightning sprayed all across the room, but not at him. And as Vader held this lightning, he ignited his red blade, but now the crystal was crackling as the light and dark within Anakin was fighting the bled crystal. He threw it through the air, spinning at Sidious. The saber spun and cut off Sidious's hands. Then Anakin called the blade back to him. When he caught it, the red blade had turned white, purified from the bleeding. Sidious's mouth was agape in complete shock. Anakin moved forward finally killing the man that took everything from him. Sidious died as Anakin was reborn. On Shandar, the Jedi and the hundred survivors were rebuilding when a single Imperial ship landed. Vader emerged, walking up to the group, and he put the Emperor's saber on the ground, saying it is done. The head of the snake, Darth Sidious, the Emperor is dead. And this would be the start of the fall of the Empire. Without the Emperor, the budding rebellion could emerge. The galaxy was ready to fight the oppression of the Empire, and over the next few years, the Empire would crumble without its Emperor, as many people were vying for control, and the Empire began to tear itself apart from the inside, 
as the rebellion would grow stronger, taking it down from the outside. During this, Obi-Wan would find a way to give Vader new armor, and he would stay hidden on Shandar, alone. Padme, Luke, and Leia would soon be with the Rebellion as they took back the galaxy. The sins of Anakin Skywalker could never be forgiven, but in the end, he did kill Sidious and help bring the peace back to the galaxy, so he was able to be left alone and occasionally see his friends and family. He was content with this, and Anakin would spend his days meditating, finding himself, completely getting rid of any remnant of darkness, as the Empire was eradicated in the galaxy. Luke and Leia would turn into fine Jedi, and eventually, Anakin would truly die without the dark side keeping him alive, and his ghost would aid the Jedi in introducing their new era. And folks, that is our video for today. Hope you guys enjoyed. I kind of took this inspiration from Revan, as when he dies on Yavin 4, his spirit, his spirit kind of shatters into two, his ghost and then his actual body. Just a little bit of inspiration from that to try and do something similar with Anakin on Mustafar, as, you know, Anakin sort of officially dies and becomes Vader. I thought, hey, what if a version of Anakin lives? So I wanted to put that out there. By the way, we're almost at 50,000 subscribers. I didn't shout out the Saber giveaway at the beginning because I'm in the works with possibly someone sponsoring it, so hoping to get that to happen. But either way, check the pinned comment to enter. Appreciate you guys. Lego Set Giveaway will also be at 50k and a giveaway exclusive for members, so if you want to become a member, hit the join button. Appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you thought, and I'll see you in the next video.